Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the filter query option in Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power Apps, SharePoint, and Teams videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting on more content in those areas. So let's get into the video. So the filter query option in Power Automate lets you filter out, and let's say a SharePoint list. So let's say I only wanted uh, a few rows. You're able to do that in Power Automate. So let's go into Power Automate. Instant cloud flow. I just want to manually trigger these flows so we can do some test cases and some examples. So we'll just do OData filter query. Manually trigger a flow because I'm going to manually trigger this. So for my examples, I'll be using the get items in SharePoint. I want to work with the SharePoint list. I'll be working on my marketing site and I will be working with the employee data. So if you click on show advanced options, you have an option here. You actually have a few options if you want to do that, but I think the most important one is probably filter query. And this will allow you to filter um, out the results. So we'll just do a few test cases and uh, I'll kind of lean into it. All right, so we have our list right here of employees. So let's say I wanted to get all the rows that contain data. As you can see, we have data here. It's got a capital D. And as you can see, we have two results that contain the word data. So let me go into get items. And for the filter query, this is going to be a substring of, and then we want to do what we're looking for. So, so this is going to be data. And then we want to do the column name, and that is job title column name. So that's the syntax of that. So I'm looking for data in the job title column. And the substring of is going to take the string and it's going to look for the specific word data in it. And to get the results, I'm just going to use a compose statement. And for the inputs, I want to do the first name. So that would be title. And it's going to toss this into a apply to each because there's going to be multiple results. Let's do title and let's do last name. All right, let me press save. So if I run this flow, um, we'll see if our filter query works. So manually chest, it's gonna connect to SharePoint, which is fine, run flow. All right, so our flow has ran. If we look at our apply to each, we got two results, and that is Alice. And then we also got Chris. So let's just check to make sure that's correct. So as you can see, we only have two results, Alice and Chris, so that works correctly. So that'll be how if you want to get like a, a substring of a string, uh, that's how you would do it. So let's do equals. So equals is pretty easy. So we'll just use the title field. And for equals, it's your column name, space EQ, and then what you what string you want to search. So let's say I want to search for Nate. We can go ahead and type Nate right here. So this should return only one result. So let's go ahead and save it. And we'll test it really quick. So as you can see, we got Nate. So that's the equals. And for the equals, it's got to be the exact wording. So if I if I search um, database only right here, it's not going to pick that up because the job title is database man. So if I just search for database with the equals, it won't return that. It's got to be an exact match. All right. So let's say I want to search to see if it is satisfactory. So if I want to search for satisfactory, this is a yes, no column. So we have four results right here. And so for satisfactory, I know this column name, it was renamed. So if I search satisfactory, it's actually going to give me an error. So it looks like the column name is satisfactory. This will be uh, equals and one. So yes, no, it's yes is one, no is zero. It's kind of like binary. So if I run this flow right now, it's not going to work. And you're probably wondering why is that? It's because when I created that column name, I had a different name for it. And so as you can see, column satisfactory does not exist. And if we go into the list settings, this is how you can find the exact column names if you're like, working on a project that you didn't start with, because sometimes the column names change throughout the project. This is how you find the exact column name. So if you click on Satisfactory, as you can see, 
So in the URL, you can see that the field is equal to happy. So that's, that will be the column I'll have to use in my filter. So let's go ahead and search happy. So happy equal one. So it should return four results because we have four employees that are satisfactory. Go ahead and press test manually. Run float. So as you can see, our applied each has four results. We'll just go through them really quick. We got Joe, Mark, Alexa, and Chris. Joe, Mark, Alexa, and Chris. So that is correct. If you want to get the results that uh, use date fields, so let's say I wanted all the employees whose start date was after 1-1-2022. So that'll be Joe, Mark, and Alexa. So for that, it would be start date, because that's the column name. And then for greater than, so I want all the start dates that are greater than 1-1-2022. So that's GT. If you want to do less than, it's going to be LT. So you just want to input the date, just like this format, 1-1-2022. So it should give us four results right here. So let's go ahead and save and run it. Apply it to each. So we got three results. As you can see, we have three people, Joe, Mark, and Alexa. So let's look, Joe, Mark, and Alexa. So that works correctly. So we'll do another one for salary. So this is actually a number field. I just put uh, the dollar sign in front of it. So I don't, we'll see if I have to include the dollar sign there. I'm, I, I would think that I wouldn't have to. So we'll do salary greater than 55,000. No, we'll do, we'll do 60, 65,000. But for 65,000, that's going to be Joe, Nate, and Chris. So let me just enter in the raw number. So we'll try it without the comma first, see if we get the correct results. If it doesn't work, I'll include the comma. But I'm not too sure on the uh, syntax of the format. We'll go to manually, run flow, done. So we got three results. Joe, Nate, and Chris. So it does look like it returned correctly. So for number fields, you don't have to include the comma. Let me see if it actually returns the correct result if I include the comma. I don't think it will because it's just looking for a straight number. Go to manual, run flow. Yeah, as you can see, it returns six results. So it returned everyone. So the comma screwed up that query. So let's do a query with multiple statements. So let's say I wanted, I want all the employees whose start date is after, uh, we'll do 2021-2022 and whose salary is over 65,000. So salary greater than 65,000. So it's gonna be an and statement. So and, and we'll do start date greater than, let me just look real quick, make sure. So we should only get one result. Actually, let's do less than. If it's less than 2022, so we should get Nate and Chris back. So we'll do less than, so let's LT space, and we'll do 1-1-2022. So let's go and look at both of these statements, and if both are true, then it will, should have give us the results. Go ahead and press test manually. Run flow, done. All right. So as you can see, we got two results, Nate and Chris, because both of those were correct. So if I did, or this should return everyone whose salary is greater than 65,000, or whose start date is less than 1-1-2022. So it's either looking for, if either one of those statements are true, it's going to return that result. So we'll have to look for anyone whose salary is greater than 65,000. So we got these three, Joe, Nate, and Chris, and whose start date is less than 1-1-2022. So that would include Alice as well. So it should return four results. So let's go ahead and click on save. Test manually, run flow. So the flow just ran, we got four results. We got Joe, included Alice, 
included Nate, included Chris. Because on either side of the statement, it, it was true. So let's do working with null values. So let's say I wanted to get all the, all the rows that included a comment. So that would exclude Alice and Mark. So let me go into the flow and we'll search comment. It's actually comments. So it's going to be comments not equal to and for null values. It's going to be a capital N U L L. So it's going to get all the rows that are not equal to null. And that should return to four results. Joe, Nate, Alexa, and Chris. Click on test manually. Run flow. We got an error right here. So let's see what is the problem. The field comments of type note cannot be used in query filter expression. Of type note, column settings. So let's look at the settings. It's multiple lines of text. Field comments of type note cannot be used in query. Oh, maybe you can't query on multiple lines, multiple lines of text. So I'll just do, let's actually remove the null and just double check that we can do it on the, on this column. So comments, let's do, we'll do substring of, and I want to get, if it says great, actually we can just remove the comments. Comments, and we'll include comments over here. The substring of great, I got great right here. So it should return go. If not, if this doesn't work, I don't think you can do filter query on multiple lines of text. So yeah, I guess you cannot do a filter query on multiple lines of text, which is unfortunate. So let's see if we can do it where the manager is not equal to null, because that's a person field. So we'll do manager not equal to null. And I want to see if that will return. That's a more complex field in SharePoint. Okay, yeah, we're getting another error. So I assume you can't do it on a person or group. Exception from H result. So I'll have to look into that. But just some troubleshooting for y'all. So we'll do, I'll show you a little trick you can do if you are having trouble with multiple expressions. So as you can see, um, I have to manually use the text. If you go to the cog wheel in the top right and click on view all power automate settings and turn on experimental features, so we press save and it's asking me to reload my page. So we'll do that. So this will turn on uh, experimental features and it looks like, <laughs> so I remove my inputs. Let me add these really quick. All right, so the site address, and then it was the employee data. So if I click on show advanced options, the filter query actually looks a lot nicer in the UI. So this is a lot for like easier people that are having a little trouble with it. So let's say I wanted to look at the title field and I wanted to get, um, I want to get multiple people. And the title field in my case is first name. So if I do title equals, and you can also do start with, but we'll just do equals. So let's say I want this equal to Joe. And we'll do also add another row where it's either equal to Joe or Alice. We'll do title equals Alice. So if either of these statements are correct, it will return the results. And I just need to set up my compose again. This UI is a little more user friendly. So you might want to turn this on if you're working in Power Automate. I usually keep it off because I like the older UI, but um, there's definitely some nice features in here. All right, I just set it up again. So let's go to save and we'll, we'll test this. So it should return either Joe or Alice. As you can see, we got Joe and we also got Alice. And I don't know why I tossed that EQ in there. All right, so let me, as you can see, let's say I wanna do like a choice field. As you can see, my choice field is called skills. And the skills is not feature here. So if I click on switch to advanced mode, it switches it to the text. So I can swap that out. So if I did, if I did skills, and if I did equals, so that's a multi-select column. So we'll see if it actually 
looks to it one by one. If not, you might have to do like a substring up. So we'll look at it right now. So I have Outlook. So let's return Joe and Nate. If it doesn't return anything, then I need to try another statement. All uh, right. So it does look like I don't need to do anything for choice fields. I got Joe and I also got Nate. So as you can see, it was a multi-select. So I wasn't sure if it was going to like click it as a giant string, but it looks like it manually goes in and just checks. Uh, we'll do one more statement on that just to confirm that it works. Let's do skills equal to Outlook or skills equal to, we'll do our automate. So that should include Alexa as well. We'll just click on save. Let's switch back to basic mode. As you can see, it, um, put these in parentheses. It's two different statements. Click on manual, run flow. So it should give us three results. Let's double, oh, it gave us four. Oh, it's because I alt Mark also has power automate. All right, we got Joe, we got Mark, Nate, and Alexa. All right, so I, that's a bunch of examples of the filter query. Sometimes it can be a little tricky if you have like multiple statements, so you have to like figure it out and just work through it and like debug. But I hope you found some value to this video. If it helped you, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any like statements you're having trouble with, you can leave them in the comments. Maybe I can help you out. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.